Welcome to Lambs to Lions. You're listening to the weekly podcast with Pastor Matt Funk. And uh, welcome to a Lambs to Lions uh, podcast. And uh, yeah, I'm really excited to have you on today, Logan. Yeah, it's because of you. It's going to be good. Good stuff. Hey, so um, we're talking today about why do people die so uh, young? And uh, I want to share an article with uh, our listeners today uh, by Time Magazine. It says, in addition to high rates of infant and maternal mortality, the latest data shows that the U- in U.S., with being in North America, children are in the midst of a deepening mental health crisis. With increased uh, access to firearms and uh, opioids, uh, driving up the rates of suicide, homicide, and unfortunately, overdoses. In 2020, firearm-related injuries surpassed motor vehicle crashes to become the leading cause of death among young Americans, 1 to 19. Yeah. In August of 2022, federal health officials released new data showing that across all demographic groups, uh, North Americans are dying younger. Again, that's an article done by, recently done by Time Magazine just this last year. And here's another one by the Wall Street Journal. It says, for decades, advances in healthcare and safety and safety steadily drove down death rates among American children. In an alarming reversal, rates have now risen to the highest level in nearly 15 years, particularly driven by homicide, drug overdoses, car accidents, and again suicide you know could there be a connection to how we are raising our kids how we're raising our young people um i believe so absolutely uh, because we are called to lead we are called to set an example and how many of us know that um you know a lot of things are taught but more things are caught than taught so a lot of this culture and our belief systems you know your belief system is established um by the ages of five and six already Um, what you think you can or cannot do. Um, And it peaks about at age 10. Age 16 is when you develop your personality traits. And so where's a lot of this occurring? It it happens in the home. Um, It happens by how we see how our parents act and respond and what they say and believe. And then those foundations get to our heart. So I want to look at uh, scripture and I want to discover how uh, specifically how honor Honor can add hours to our daily lives as well as increase the quality uh, of our life. Uh, Ephesians 6, 1 says this, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. So right there, why do we obey? It's right. <laughs> it's right. That's right. It's the right thing to do. You know, in the Amplified Version, it says this, children, obey, obey your parents in the Lord. That is, accept their guidance and discipline as his representatives. For this is right, for obedience teaches wisdom and self-discipline uh, and teaches wisdom and self-discipline. So that's the amplified version. So the first point uh, that I'd like to share with our listeners, those that are watching today, is this. The key to self-discipline and wisdom is obedience. That's good. Yeah. And so how many of you men that are out there listening to this um, podcast uh, would like more self-discipline, would like more wisdom. I know I would. Yeah. Uh, there are similarities to um, how we obey our parents from uh, how we were young up to the point in, in how we parent our kids even today. Uh, we also find ourselves in similar roles as spiritual fathers of the house and uh, even in, in the church. Uh, the same godly principles apply to our spiritual growth, both in wisdom and in self-discipline. Uh, um, my children become disciplined as I raise them up uh, in the Lord. Uh, if I am consistent in training and following through and giving them godly guidance and correction, well, that's going to make a big difference. As a father, I still know that I can always do a better job of encouraging you guys and 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 giving you the quality time that you guys deserve. Now, uh, for those of our listeners that don't know, I have five kids. Yeah. And so they all need quality time. They all have different, they all need it differently. Unfortunately, they're not all built the same. Uh, so I have to learn their love languages and I got to learn what that means to spend quality time with them. I have to discover their interests and their passions. It just so happens uh, for Logan, uh, you know, it's it's the church. So it works out pretty good. We spend a lot of time, time together at the church, actually. Even now, as we're doing this podcast, our men's prayer 
is going on. There's three different groups that are happening around the church. They meet 5.30 a.m. every Tuesday morning, and we get deeper in the Word yeah. and uh, deeper in our relationship with God as we talk to Him and talk to each other. Um, but yeah, but it's by the grace of God with the support of my uh, loving wife, uh, Charmaine, also pastors with me, uh, that we are proud of the lions yep. that we are raising in our home. Uh, so my two oldest boys, you know, Logan being one, and then uh, my oldest, Aiden, are great examples of obedient, godly men. They both uh, show these characteristics, uh, traits. Uh, they follow through on their responsibilities, uh, not just around the house, but in God's house, in this church. You know, they both get up early uh, before the sun gets up. They train both spiritually, physically. They study the word of God daily. They uh, go to the gym you know, proud of you guys that you do that. <laughs> and, um, and again, you know, I grew up, my dad wasn't going to the gym, you know, he his work was hard enough, uh, but it became a habit in my life. And now it's a habit in my kid's life. Uh, so it's cool to see that. Uh, they help take care of their siblings. They do chores around the house. They also uh, show up to men's prayer. And uh, they both, both of you guys serve as assistant directors in our kids theater yeah. in our church as well. So uh, that's under Coach Delton, Coach Rodney. Um, they also usually, you're also usually the first to, sh uh, to show up, to set up, and the last to leave. A lot of that probably has to do because I'm your ride. Yep. So you're going to be <laughs> first true. in, last out the door. And, you know, I think that's really good, too, because as leaders, uh, as spiritual leaders of the household, but just men as leaders, you know, we should never ask anyone else to do something else that we're not willing to do mm -hmm. ourselves, right? And Jesus said, if you want to be a great sir, uh, a leader, that you need to be a great servant. Um, so yeah, really proud of you guys. You guys, uh, are great examples of, of that. And, um, like many men that you guys do a, a lot of work behind the scenes, um, that people don't see, but that's another topic we talked about. Success really happens behind the scenes. It's what people don't see. Um, but God always sees and we do this. Why? So people can encounter Jesus that so we get to be part of building his people as he builds uh, the kingdom. And uh, with all the things that are going on, you know, uh, we can say as as for me and my house, you know, uh, we're going to serve. We're going to serve the, whole, the Lord. So let's discover the key to self-discipline and wisdom uh, as uh, we are obedient to our Heavenly Father and model that principle in our home and in our church. So, Logan, uh, you know, what do you have to say about that? <laughs> so, I mean... We've all been in positions where we feel like we're working extra hard and nobody's noticing mm -hmm. or even worse yet, they kind of do notice, but they don't really value it or don't really care at all. Um, and it's like, it kind of sucks because it feels like you get no reward for what you are doing. But then when you don't do something, you get criticized for it. Mm, so, come on. you know, it can feel kind of discouraging, but you know, when was the last time you held the door for someone oh. or, you know, gave a generous tip to someone serving you? Or yesterday just... and this morning. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but That's good. Tip was yesterday. That's good. The door was this morning, but go ahead. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but for our listeners, yeah. When was the last time you did that? <laughs> yeah. You were just saying something encouraging, right? Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of these things take us seconds to do on our part with like little cost. It's true. But we do underestimate the impact they have on others. Yeah. Um, Ephesians 6, 2 verse 3 says, honor your mother and father. I was, and um, this is the first commandment with the promise mm. that it may go well with you and that you may long, live long in the land. Mm. So the second point I kind of have for you guys here is take care of those that take care of you. Oh, come on. It's good. It's good stuff. Some people don't get nearly enough credit for what they do as mothers and fathers. When you're young, you don't realize how much they do every day. But yeah. now that, you know, even some of you listening have your families of your own, you're like, wow, you probably appreciate a little bit more. Yeah. You know, I know even just from my little experience of just babysitting and working in the kids ministry, I know taking kids, taking care of kids is hard sometimes. Yeah. And, you know, doing <laughs> yeah. that full time would be even harder, especially considering adults have jobs and they got to pay their taxes yeah, and they got right. bills and expenses. And sure do. <laughs> it's a lot. So, yeah, I definitely, definitely appreciate that. Um, Let's see, we're up here. <laughs> but, you know, it's you get caught up in your own life sometimes where mm. you think, oh, I've got it so bad. But, um, you know, really, I don't. <laughs> and I know there's people behind the scenes like my parents who go to Great Lakes to make my life as awesome as it is. So, um, yeah, whether you live with your parents, have lived with your parents, 
or even just know someone who is like a spiritual father or mother to you, mm. I would encourage you to just help out. You know, they do a lot. Help them out with something and even just reaching out and saying something encouraging or even praying for them. All those things go, go a long way. Mm. Well said, Logan. That's good. Powerful words. Powerful words. And for a perspective of a, of a young man, um, you know, uh, and I feel you did a great job of, of honoring your, your parents. So thanks for saying those things. Um, verse four of Ephesians six says this, fathers, do not exasperate your children. Instead, bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. Again, I'm going to read from the Amplified Version. And it says this, fathers, do not provoke your children to anger and do not exasperate them to the point of resentment with demands that are trivial or unreasonable, or humiliating, or abusive, nor by showing favoritism, that's a hard one, or indifference to any of them, but bring them up tenderly and love in loving kindness in the discipline and the instruction of the Lord. Well said. A lot of stuff there. A lot of stuff there. Sometimes as parents, we can we can show favoritism, but you know what? No matter the, the ages of our, our children, the standard still remains the same. Now, uh, for you, you have uh, more freedoms than, say, Chloe or Max is, are going to have, but you also have more responsibility. It's true. You know, so as, as our children get older and they're f- faithful with what we give them, we give them a little more, so they get more responsibility. Uh, they also get more freedom. So, but the standard still remains the same. Um, you know, this is really what we just read as a parent's guide um, to raising godly children, uh, both what to do and what not to do. And there's always a process uh, to God's plan, especially when it comes to his uh, promises and especially when it comes to discipleship. So these same principles, which we just read, also work not only at home, but also work in how we lead in the workplace and in the in the church. And so if we were to lead according to these godly principles, just very quickly, we got A, don't provoke to anger. Mm -hmm. B, don't place unrealistic demands on others. C, don't abuse your power. You know, just because you have a a position doesn't mean that you necessarily are are using the right posture in your position. Mm -hmm. So don't abuse your power. Uh, D, don't show favoritism. E, be kind and loving in your connection and in your discipline. And uh, F, bring them up in the Lord. That's key. You know, like, who are we doing it for? Why are we doing it? It's all for the Lord. So everything we do really is for him. Um, in Ephesians 6, 7 to 8 says, serve wholeheartedly as you were serving the Lord, not people, because you know that the Lord will reward each of you for whatever good they do, whether they are slave or whether they are free. Uh, final point that I have for us, Logan, today is to selfless, selflessly serve uh, is what serves us. So selfless service is what serves us. Uh, you know, in spiritual, uh, spiritual, in spiritual service, part of me is choosing to do something for someone else without expecting something from them. I'll say that again. Spiritual service is choosing to do something for someone else without expecting something from them. Sounds a lot like agape love. Yeah. Agape love is an unconditional love. And so when we serve the way God serves, we love the way God loves. And uh, it's not expecting anything in return. Galatians 5.23 says, you, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free. Come on. But do not use your freedom to indulge in the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. Each of you should use whatever gift that you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in various forms. Love, there it is, must be sincere. Must be sincere. Must be authentic. And the verse that I have for us to meditate on this week for our Lambs to Lions is this. Joshua twenty four fifteen, But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourself this day whom you will serve, whether the gods of your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But this was Joshua that said this, as for me and my house, ah, we will serve the Lord. And I think that's what we all need to say as lambs yeah. and lions. We need to say we are called to serve the Lord. Thank you so much, you guys, for tuning in to another Lambs and Lions podcast. Thank you, Logan, for coming on and sharing your words of wisdom. And uh, thank you for all those that might be listening to The Voice. And remember that you have a voice and you can find victory in the valley. 
Thank you for tuning in today, and thank you for continuing to partner with us and for giving so generously to this ministry. If you would like to find out more about how you can partner with us, visit our website at www.wherepeoplematter.church and click the giving link. And don't forget to subscribe and share this with your friends. See you next time.